Hi, in this video, I will show you a few features of Para Manager, which is, in our opinion, one of the most, if not the most powerful parameter managing tool for Revit. It's free. It's part of the Roots One, uh, the bundle of productivity, the most popular productivity tools on Autodesk App Store. So uh, if you open Para Manager, uh, you will find that there is a couple of tabs called Transfer, Families, and the Shared Editor. Now we will discuss briefly what each of these does beyond just the basic uh, parameter creation and assigning to categories. Now, if you go to Shared Editor, uh, the purpose of this tab is to allow you to create a shared parameter files in a user-friendly and you know accessible manner. So you don't need to go through, for example, um, shared parameters workflow natively in Revit because this one is okay. It does the trick, it does the job done, but it's a very cumbersome to use and doesn't allow too much flexibility in all honesty. So what we can do here, let me show you how we can create one uh, shared parameter file easily. And uh, what we will do, we will inject parameters that we create here into some families from the project level. So it will make sense, more sense in a second. So bear with me. For example, I can add uh, two parameters. First, we will call, I don't know, code. And the other one we will call warranty, I don't know, something like uh, duration. Okay, we will keep them as text, but you see that all of these family types are exposed here. We can assign them to the groups. For example, let's create one group called utility uh, parameters. Okay, we can assign here. Control A, and we can find that utility group here. Now, what we can add also is a tip. Uh, we can, uh, to tip, we can type unique, uh, unique, um, code of the object, something just to showcase that we can add the tooltips, uh, user modifiable, visibility, and so on. These are all attributes of parameters that share parameter files support. I will click these checkboxes. And uh, what we can do, we can store them on a desktop as an example. And let's call this uh, my SP file. You can, of course, give some more meaningful name, but so far uh, you see that status changed to green. And actually, the color coding in all of our plugins goes like this. If you see the red color, it means that purely virtually exists in the plugin. Yellow code means that you uh, modified something that already exists in the model, but you didn't propagate change to the model. And green means state in the model and in the plugin are in sync, which means now we created something saved, stored, and we get the green code. Okay, we have now this shared parameter file. So let us add these parameters to some families. How we can do that? We can go to families tab and we can, for example, see all the families that are used in the model space, right? So what we can so do, we can sort by uh, category, okay? And as an example, we can use the search bar in this way manner. If you click here on any of these items, search bar will be focused on this tab here. So we can type M underscore and we get all families that start with M underscore, right? So that's a trick, but let's find our doors. As an example, let's select with shift, holding shift, uh, all the doors in the model, door families. And let's imagine that we want to inject these parameters without opening one by one putting the parameters in family, loading back in the model. So we can do this as a batch action. And actually it's a very simple. I will add one called test parameter. Okay. And also we can import, we can mix how we can create the parameters. We can import them from Excel or we can import shared parameters. Okay. So what it means that I can select my shared parameter file and I see these two uh, parameters they are under utility group which is fine and we can change some things here for example uh, let's suppose that on the fly we want to put some prefix for example dr standing for the roots maybe underscore and we can click but you can see that also you can replace some values with some other values and so on in case you are injecting a lot of parameters okay 
Now you see that operation was done on the parameters that are checked. So what we can do, maybe because I forgot to check this one, we can type underscore and this is it. Now we can inject also the default value. Uh, for example, for code, we can type uh, my code as an example, as a starting value, anybody. Uh, you don't need these quotations. I just put them here to show you that actually they will be injected. But for now, we created a list of parameters that we will, in a batch process, uh, inject into these families from the model perspective. And of course, we need to check on this side and on this side which uh, which families versus which parameters we want to match. Okay. Uh, of course, we can see additional attributes, and these things start to become very interesting because you can see all of this information laid down nicely. You see something like this, right? But for the, for purposes of this demonstration, these are not useful for us. Okay and we can apply changes uh, the process will start and in the background parameter manager will open the family silently inject the parameters load it back and so on uh, any uh, you can imagine honestly uh, how much time this saves actually so let me just uh, uh, where is parameter manager okay let's get it's doing its thing. <clears throat> Let's wait a second. And we are going to get, uh, it's a warnings information dialog in which we will list all of these families, everything went successful. You see all the green check boxes there. You can save report in Excel file just if you want to claim, okay, I did this part, for example, or you can just close, honestly. So what we can do now, take a look into this and let's open one filter. It's part of the roots one. You open the one filter. And what we can do, we can type doors as an example. It will load all the doors in the model and we can click isolate uh, command. Okay. And we can see all the doors in the model. So let's inspect. Uh, these are all created on an instance level. Some of these are text, some are under grouped under other uh, grouping categories. So let's see. DR code, and you see the default value is propagated. But if we go, for example, to text parameters, we will find the R test parameter. Let's select other family or even this one. You see the R test parameter and so on. So this is how it's easy to kind of inject parameters into families from model perspective. And uh, the best part to do it in Bosch process, so you kind of uh, save a lot of time <laughs> in this exercise. And uh, I would like again to reiterate just quickly on the shared editor. What you can do here is uh, very easily, in very user-friendly manner, you can manage your shared parameter files. You can create once, store them, or you can combine them like this. For example, I will do something like this and uh, wait me a second to type some name. And we can select some other shared parameter file. And look what will ask us, parameter manager now. It will ask us to combine with this one. It means append the parameters that are declared in the shared parameter file or discard and just load the new shared parameter file. Let's append those. So what you get here is a couple of test parameters that are just randomly created plus the parameters from previous shared parameter file. Now what you can do, things become very interesting here you can store them as a new merged shared parameter file and that's how it's easy right so you can use clear button unload file from para manager load again to see to confirm and you see code you see warranty duration and you see other test files so what we did we easily merged and combined to 
shared parameter files into one. And of course, we can modify them. We can add tooltips and so on. Let's inspect did this tooltip work. For example, if I select this family and let's go to code, uh, let's find the code, the R code. If we hover over it, you, it says unique code of the object. Does it say here? Yes. So we provided also the tooltip. So hope this will help you. There is uh, many other functionalities that you can do. Duplicate parameters, uh, generate the new GYDs for parameters, delete them, and so on. So hope you will find use in your projects uh, of these features of the Para Manager and uh, you enjoy. And uh, we are always glad to add more features. So we will listen to your feedback and you know address it. Thank you and uh, have a nice week.